Welcome to another Bpop Pro video everyone. I'm Rory at bpoppro.com. Bpop is a pre-operative orthopedic planning and templating app. It is synchronized across all your phone, tablet and laptop devices with a single monthly subscription. Whether you're planning for a TPLO, a CBLO, closing wedge or TTA, you can plan your cruciate cases in an instant with fingertip precision. Whether it's a trauma case or a total hip or knee replacement, VPOP has all your favorite implant templates, all with the crystal clear footprints. You'll never see a pixel or want to plan with anything else. What images can you use? Well, you can import DICOMs, JPEGs, screenshots, and even PDFs of lecture notes, or maybe a key journal article, all to carefully prepare for your patient's best outcomes. You can also define your coras and plan your angular limb deformities, which is exactly what this short 10 minute video is all about. So we're going to talk about anatomic axes and we'll be explaining and defining some unusual but very important abbreviations such as coras, ACAs and TBLs and we'll be explaining why they're important. Finally, we'll be bringing them all together and using VPOP's simple, precise and intuitive tools to illustrate Paley's three osteotomy laws and we'll be applying them to a tibial angular limb deformity. So in this first slide, we have a cordocranial projection of a canine tibia. And for the purposes of illustration, we've made an obvious artificial deformity in the mid diaphyseal region. When referring to limb deformities, we talk about the plane of the deformity in which we can see the deformity. This deformity example on screen is in the frontal plane. That means we can only see this deformity from a craniocaudal or cordocranial perspective. So initial points to note. We need a well-contrasted radiograph to easily make out our cortices and articular surfaces. That allows us to define our joint orientation lines and anatomical axes. We have a calibration reference point, in this case a spherical marker of a known size that's level and adjacent to our area of anatomic interest. We also have a well-positioned radiograph. Proximally, we can see the fabelli neatly bisected by the medial and lateral femoral condyles. Distally, we have the medial wall of the calcaneus precisely intersecting the intermediate ridge of the tibial cochlea, just at the distal end of that blue arrow. So what is an anatomic axis? Well, it's a line that precisely bisects the, the medullary cavity of a straight portion of bone or the best fit of that part of the bone. And in this projection, we've used the VPOP annotation tools to demarcate the proximal anatomic axis in pink here and the distal anatomical axis in blue here. So you can see that these two anatomic, in, uh, anatomic axes intersect and where they intersect represents a key point of interest. It's a central point where if we were to rotate the image about the axis point through the screen, the plane of the deformity, and if we were to, were to rotate the image by the angle of the intersecting lines, we would be able to correct the deformity, i.e. it's a cora. And every cora has an angle associated with it, and we call that the magnitude of the cora, or the deformity. And in this case, it's 20 degrees. In this next slide, we're going to introduce the transverse bisecting line. This is the line that precisely halves or bisects the transverse angles that are created by the extension of the proximal and distal anatomic axes. There's a very simple, precise and efficient way to demarcate this transverse bisecting line with the VPOP tools. If you just center a circle on the neutral cora and you place a line across the circle's intersection of the proximal and distal anatomic axes like this and simply then slide or pan the line up in VPOP to meet the neutral cora. So why is this transverse bisecting line important? Well, it's a line that joins any two coras or in other words, an infinite line of coras. That means you can center a rotation of the angulation of the deformity anywhere along this line to correct the deformity. Now we can show this with Paley's first rule of osteotomies in the next slide. In this third slide, we're going to introduce the ACA and Paley's first law. Remember, every cora has a magnitude and, in, 
and in this case it's 20 degrees. To correct the deformity we must visualize a point or axis through this screen, the plane of the deformity, about which to rotate for the correction. This point or axis is referred to the angulation correction axis or ACA. Now if the ACA and the osteotomy are both on the transverse bisecting line then the proximal and distal anatomic axes become collinear after the deformity is corrected. And this demonstrates Paley's first law. So watch this in BPOP. We're going to rotate the distal limb with the ACA placed at the neutral cora. We're going to correct by the cora magnitude and see how the axes become collinear. And again, by 20 degrees and the axes become collinear. Now if we place the ACA on the concave side of the bone, like so, and we lock it into position, we've selected a closing cora and the limb length reduces. So that's the ACA on the concave side. Correct the deformity by the magnitude of the cora and you get a closing cora and a limb length reduction. So conversely, if we now move the ACA to the convex side of the deformity on the transverse bisecting line and we correct the deformity by the 20 degree magnitude of the cora, we can demonstrate an opening cora and the limb length increases. So if the angulation correction axis and the osteotomy are on the transverse bisecting line, then you get collinearity of the anatomic axes after the deformity correction. In this next slide, we're going to be demonstrating Paley's second law for osteotomies. We're going to correct by the core a magnitude of 20 degrees again, but this time we're going to keep the, the ACA on the transverse bisecting line on a cora, but place the, uh, the osteotomy away from the transverse bisecting line. So let's see what happens. So our osteotomy is distal to our transverse bisecting line here, and we're going to place our ACA anywhere on the transverse bisecting line, i.e. in this example, on the neutral cora. And when we rotate to correct the deformity, we'll still get collinearity of the axes, but this time we get a translation of the cortices. And again, collinearity. So we can use this to our advantage to correct an existing translational deformity. So let's move the ACA to an opening cora this time and see what happens. Lock it down. And again, we get collinearity of our anatomic axes, but there's a translation again of the cortices. We get an anatomic axis collinearity, but a translation of the cortices. So that's Paley's second law, saying that if the ACA is a cora, but the osteotomy is sighted away from the transverse bisecting line, you get collinearity of the anatomic axes, but you also get a translation of the cortices. In this final slide, we're going to be demonstrating Paley's third law of osteotomies. We'll still be correcting by the cora magnitude of 20 degrees, but this time both the ACA and the osteotomy will be away from the transverse bisecting line. So let's see what happens. So our osteotomy is distal to our transverse bisecting line denoted here by the red arrow. And we're going to place our ACA anywhere except on the transverse bisecting line, for example, on the medial cortex distal 
to the transverse bisecting line. And when we rotate to correct the deformity, this time we get a translation of the axes. I, they're parallel, but not collinear. Parallel, but not collinear. This demonstrates Paley's third law of osteotomies. So just for fun, let's move the ACA again and see what happens. The ACA doesn't have to be fixed over the bone stock, but the principal law remains the same. If the ACA and the osteotomy are away from the transverse bisecting line, you can align the anatomic axes to be parallel but not collinear. They won't be collinear unless you're deliberately correcting an existing translational deformity. That's Paley's third law of osteotomies demonstrated in VPOP Pro. So that completes this video. We have illustrated and defined anatomic axes. We've defined a cora, the center of rotation of the angulation. We've shown how to delineate and explained the significance of the transverse bisecting line, a line that joins any two coras. We've also illustrated the angulation correction axis and the significance of where it can be sighted. Finally, we've illustrated Paley's three osteotomy laws using the above terms, all in VPOP Pro. Remember, VPOP Pro is your dedicated orthopedic planning and templating solution, one subscription synchronizing across all your devices. Remember, you can register for your free two-week trial at app.vpop-pro.com. That's app.vpop-pro.com. Thank you very much for your attention.